On Story is brought to you in part by the Alice Kleberg Reynolds Foundation. Innovative funding since 1979. On Story, presented by Austin Film Festival. Welcome to a look behind the scenes at the creative process with some of the film industry's most prolific writers, directors, and producers, as well as a showcase of short films from the region's most promising filmmakers. I think everybody probably knows what to do. Grab a camera, um, get out and shoot, edit. Editing is crucial. But, you know, the most important thing is to write because, it, you know, it, whatever the medium, it all boils down to how well is that story fulfilled? You know, how well thought out is it? How well realized is it? And, and um, you know, you've, you, you've got to put, you know, pen to paper or fingers to keyboard and, and, um, and, and, and get it going, get it organized. I'll tell you that if I were to sit here and go with sort of the um, flashbacks of highlights of my life in, in, in terms of uh, film, probably one of the first ones that leaps to mind is the wrap party for Grand Theft Auto, which we had out at this little dive bar, and it was just shots and beer out in Saugus in the desert, right next to where we finished up this destruction derby scene, and we'd done it. We finished a movie, and I was there dancing with my wife, Cheryl, who'd helped out in the movie, wound up catering the film, because everyone was gonna revolt if they got one more dose of McDonald's. And, um, and, uh, and I just remember thinking, I'm done, and I've been talking about this since I was a little tiny kid. I was all of 23 at the time, but looking back. And I, and I actually loved directing this movie more than I ever imagined I would. And I just, it was a completely transformative, and you know, from then on I just wanted to learn. So I felt like, you know, that was kind of Cinema 101, and, and I'm still learning. I had written a script, um, and uh, it didn't go well with the director, and I, I actually was like the first time that I was involved in something where where I sort of locked horns with the director and um, and had to walk away from it and um, and at that point I thought you know maybe to protect my work I was going to have to direct something mm -hmm. and um, so it was an example of a bad experience leading to a good one I kind of when I say put out the word I talked to Scott Rudin who by this time he's, you know we had started he was 18 he was working for Edgar Sherrick now he was starting to produce movies uh, I told him about that, and he sent me kind of everything that he had or that he was interested in, books, articles, things like that, and one of them was Searching for Bobby Fischer, which was this little book with a photograph of this kid on it intently staring over a chessboard. And um, I had, he was uh, basically eight years old during, the, uh, during this s story when this book was written, uh, Josh Waitzkin, the chess player. And my own, my one of my sons was the same age, so I, I really related to it. And uh, in, in terms of the story, he didn't play chess, my son, but the the family story I, I could relate to. When, when I was reading Apollo 13, the first time, it was a very dense, complicated script. It wound up going through lots and lots of drafts and work and so forth, and so, certain things you know, worked better than others in my mind. And so I'm reading it, and I was, I was actually taking the, the train from, uh, from my house into New York, um, the, the Metro North line, and, I, and it was crowded, and I was standing, just jammed in, um, and, uh, and reading, and you know, it, it, we got to, I got to the end, and um, the chutes opened, and I knew the chutes were gonna open, but I started to, fight off tears, standing there next to a bunch of com commuters. Hello, Houston. This is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. And I just remember feeling that something that adds up so powerfully um, really, you know, has a wonderful chance to be a remarkable movie and at that point 
I, I really wouldn't have ever let anyone else work on it. I first worked with him because he was the executive producer on Searching for Bobby Fischer. And the reason he was the executive on the film was that I didn't have final cut, but he did, even as a producer. So Sidney came on to protect me, basically, um, with the film. He did read the script and, and had one comment on the script, which was a really good one. It was on one line, um, which I took. It's a scene where uh, Joe Montaigne uh, is talking to Ben Kingsley, with the, really when they first talk to each other in the, in the, it's called the Backgammon Club, where this kind of smoky tournament is going on, kind of in the middle of the film, at the beginning of the film. And uh, Ben says, um, the line is something like, uh, I'll tell you, you know, what it was that I lost when Bobby Fischer disappeared, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the line is, something like that. And I actually had an answer for what yes. that was. And he said, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't tell the answer, just pose the question. You want to know what I want? I'll tell you what I want. I want back what Bobby Fischer took with him when he disappeared. You're his father, it's your decision. What I did do is observe, uh, you know, mathematicians working with, uh, professors working with PhD candidates, and I got Russell to come, oh. just to watch and see how they use that language to be expressive. And as I began interviewing people, mathematicians, um, to, I, I began to understand that if for them it is a language and it's, and it's, a, uh, and it's, it's there's something kind of poetic about it. Well, and they start talking about elegant solutions and things like, and you realize it's this, this creative quest that I could suddenly relate to. Right. Because sometimes when you're working on a story or a scene, there's an elegant solution. There's a moment where you say, ah, that works. And that's what they're striving for. And, and I could explain that to Russell or he could witness it himself. Well, Russell also writes a lot of music, and suddenly he began to understand the character, and it wasn't necessarily, you know, the characters that he was working with, the um, algorithms he was writing out. It was that it was creativity. Most stories have to be about, you know, tests of character or, or uh, challenges to their uh, existence or, or the existence of a group of people who are trying to achieve something. And I'm drawn to those stories. I'm drawn to stories about families, and I'm often drawn to stories about group endeavors because that's, I, I, I just, um, I, I relate to it. It's not exclusively what I've done. But when I connect with a thing, then I start to not, to, to, to believe I can, I, can, I can bring some creativity to it. And I, I start to, you know, become proprietary about it. I don't want to let go of it because I'm eager to apply my, my ideas to, you know, something that's already well on its way. Yeah, I got a call from somebody who uh, worked with Scorsese. I'm not even sure how, how that happened. Right. Um, but yes, he was the, the original director on it. And um, we worked together. Uh, on a couple of drafts, and it was, you know, it was great. It, 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 he, he, he is somebody who, um, you know, you just sit down with for eight hours and kind of go over the script page by page, and ideas come up, and it's a wonderful, a wonderful kind of experience. In terms of the first draft, um, he also leaves you totally on your own, you know, to do whatever you want and then starts making suggestions after the first draft is done. So that, that was really good. And by the way, Spielberg does the same thing. And by the way, I think most good directors do the same thing. You know, leave the writer alone to begin with, and then really get into the, the process of collaboration uh, on the rewrites. 
Um, this event in, in Schindler's life was something that he talked about quite a bit. It was a kind of a turning point in his, in his life that he recognized. And he, you know, when asked to describe her, he said she was a little girl in a red coat. And um, so that's how we referred to her, you know, how I referred to her in the script. And, you know, she didn't have a name. She was just always the, the girl in the red coat. And when Spielberg decided to shoot the film in black and white, you know, I said immediately, but what about the girl in the red coat? Um, now what, we have to give her a name? I mean, how, how is she going to be distinguished? Uh, and, and he made the decision to, to hand tint the film. And, uh, you know, at the time I thought, mm, you know, it might, you know, it might be too much. It might draw, t take you out of the film. And, uh, you know, it didn't. He, he, and, and, he, and he recognized it too as a kind of, it's an, it's an important enough image that you can do that to it. Hi, my name is Nazanin Shirazi and I'm the writer-director of the film Red Wednesday. Char Shambesuri, or Red Wednesday as it's called in English, is an ancient Zoroastrian fire celebration that Persians perform before the New Year. And basically, we jump over a series of fires and ask the fire to take away all our sickness and misfortune and give us health and happiness in return for the upcoming year. I grew up in a suburban Texas neighborhood and performing this tradition in our driveway was oftentimes awkward with our neighbors. They really saw it as some barbaric ritual, um, watching a bunch of crazy Persians jumping over like these huge fires was really, really strange to them and they even called the cops on us one year. Um, but this tradition is actually really beautiful and meaningful, which is why I wanted to make a film about it. I wanted the protagonist of my film um, to react in ways I never had the courage to do so as a child. Um, for instance, there are fantasy sequences in the film that are kind of lighthearted um, because I wanted to respond in a sort of humorous way to situations I didn't necessarily understand as a child. Something people might not know about the film is that Tanya, the little girl, is actually Lebanese, not Iranian. And Hilda, the mother, she had never acted a day before in her life. As you can imagine, finding Iranian actors in Texas is next to impossible. Um, and I think they did a really beautiful job. Coming up is my film, Red Wednesday. Thanks for watching. On the last Wednesday of the Zoroastrian year, Persians jump across bonfires, asking the fire to cleanse them of misfortunes and give them health and light in return. <laughs> In March of 1978, as my family gathered to celebrate Chashan Basuri, my mother was in the back shed, having an explosion of her own. A year later, my mother left Iran, and she never celebrated Red Wednesday again. The light inside my mother was slowly fading, so I decided it was time to rekindle her spirit. ببینم دست تو بریدی مامی
Pasha. Pasha did it today. Kid, you can't buy that without your mom. Revelation 21.8 clearly says the fearful, unbelieving, the sinners, their part is in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask you to watch out for those who have been led astray. We ask you that one day... I wanted Mrs. Brown to see our fire celebration. Amen. I wondered why my mother sent me to that school. She said religious fervor had turned Iran into a dark cloud. از کجا اومده؟ این که همینجوری اینجا نایمده؟ دیوونه شدی؟ خطرناکه میخوای همه خونه رو آتیش بزنی؟ همسایی ها چی فکر میکنن؟ 
همجوری هم فکر کنم آدم های جو قریب هستیم My mother conceived me on the night of her last Red Wednesday celebration. She said that as my heartbeat strengthened inside of her, so did the revolutionary sentiments in Iran. Nine months after that evening, on a day when thousands of people were rioting in the streets of Tehran, I was born. She named me Shole, Flame.
On Story, presented by Austin Film Festival. A look behind the scenes at the creative process with some of the film industry's most prolific writers, directors, and producers, as well as a showcase of short films from the region's most promising filmmakers.